and the people I mean, I think that's that's pretty amazing that you're able to do that. And within that period also get more grants? Grants, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And so that's so, how you begin uh, building so, a portfolio. <laughs> building a portfolio. So this this welcome trust grant um for non communicable diseases, you were able to actually do research for it for three years. Yes. And more. Did you get more uh, non-communicable disease grants or other grants for other mostly non-communicable disease grants. Okay. So this topic, this this uh, project, mm-hmm. you know, when I applied for it, mm-hmm. um, if you did uh, before you define the project yeah. that something is important, mm-hmm. many times it's something which comes from. I think many times it comes from your personal experience. Mm-hmm. So as I've said, I was sitting in this PhD program and mm-hmm. there was dash, dash, dash. So mm. there was really not a lot of data, data on yeah. non-communicable disease, any mm. non-communicable disease. Mm. But then the issue was, we well, can't have data for the sake of data. Mm. For me, I wanted to do something, to do research that will help define solutions okay. to problems, not just to, to define, to describe problems. Mm. Because you can do research which just says there are, 200, there are 20% smokers in Kenya. And then? Okay, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Or they are like 10, 10% of people have hypertension, mm-hmm. then what? Mm-hmm. Then, so for me, my research interest was in how do we increase the number of people who are aware that they have hypertension so that they can get treatment so mm-hmm. that they are controlled mm-hmm. rather than how many people have hypertension and yeah. then you stop there. Yeah. But then you can't go to the second part, the first part of defining solutions without understanding this, the magnitude of the problem. Yeah. Because if you if you write a grant and say, I want to define models of treating hypertension, they will say how many hypertensives are there? Mm. How many people have hypertension in Kenya? And you don't know that. Mm. Mm. So my first grant was really understanding um, cardiovascular diseases Mm -hmm. and their risk factors. Mm. So which means what I said earlier, Mm. how many people have hypertension? Mm -hmm. How many people have diabetes? Um, How many people knew that they have hypertension before Mm. um, the study Mm -hmm. told them that they have hypertension? Mm. How many are on treatment? Mm. How many are, on, on, are con- well controlled? Mm. Then now the risk factors mm. for these diseases include things like tobacco use. How many people smoke? Mm. Um, how many people use chew tobacco? Mm. Then alcohol use. Mm-hmm. There's the whole science of measuring alcohol use. Mm-hmm. And then things like uh, physical activity, mm-hmm. exercise, mm. um, then diet, mm-hmm. uh, which is mostly fruits and vegetables. Mm. So you, there's, you can quantify mm. how, many, how many people have risk factors mm. for non-communicable diseases mm-hmm. by measuring those four things. Mm. Physical activity, diet, alcohol, and tobacco. Mm-hmm. So that was my topic. And mm-hmm. I, I did a survey on 5,190 people in Nairobi. In, oh, so it was, um, the sample size was from Nairobi. Yeah, it was from okay. Nairobi, mm-hmm. yeah. And we're able to get information about what percentage were hypertensive, mm. how, what percentage were diabetic, mm-hmm. Uh, what percentage was obese, mm. uh, and then now all these things, risk mm. factors, alcohol use, mm. tobacco mm. use, uh, physical activity and diet. And at that, from, <coughs> from the time, this is 2008, Eight. 2008, yeah. From that time, what, what are some of the findings? What are some of the interesting findings? Um, wow. I think the most striking finding was that if you started with 100 people mm. who had hypertension, mm-hmm. um, only about... 25% of them were aware that they had that hypertension. That they had. 75% Do have never know. been measured. They didn't know they have hypertension. Mm. They're just living their lives. They're just living their lives. Living La Vida Loca, it's fine. Exactly. Mm. Now, when you took those... But they have risk factors. Yes, they mm. actually have hypertension. Mm. And this was not just that you take it once and... Mm. No. Mm. This, you take it once, Continuous. you take it another time, you mm. send them to a clinic and they take it and they still mm. have high blood pressure. Mm. But 75% did not know. Mm. I think it was actually 80 did not mm. know that they had high blood pressure. Mm. Now, when you take the 20 mm. who knew mm. only about 11 had been on treatment the previous year, the, tw- the previous 12 months, oh. half of them were not on treatment, mm. even though they knew mm. and, and had been diagnosed that they had hypertension. Mm. Then if you took the 11 mm. who had been on treatment in the previous 12 months, mm. only about five mm. had been on, treat- on treatment in the last one month. Mm. So somebody got treatment in July last year mm. for hypertension and all these months they're not on treatment. Mm. So the most striking thing was if you start with 100 people who have high blood pressure, only mm. one of them, their blood pressure was under control. I think it was like 0.7%. That is wrong and sad. Yeah. And, 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 and it was the same for, for diabetes. 
and in 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 the Nairobi population was hypertension mostly what what age category and so what we, gender? So we did eighteen and above, mm -hmm. um, and then the prevalence was about twenty five percent. Oh, so twenty five percent of people who mm. were aged above 18, eighteen in this sample mm. had the high blood pressure. Mm. Mostly, mo mostly what demographic? Um, what so I said eighteen and above. Uh, it, <laughs> so it, it was it, men, women uh, across board. Yeah, across but then board. the 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 geography. Mm. We did this in Korogocho oh, in and Diwanani. Okay, mm. which was also surprising mm. because hypertension, diabetes are considered diseases of the affluent. And rich people disease. But this uh, this is not yeah, an affluent. This is Korogocho. And... This is and exactly. Oh my goodness. So the prevalence was really high. Oh my goodness. You know, diabetes, I think, was about what five percent. I don't remember the numbers now. But uh, the the most just imagine you get a hundred people with diabetes, yeah, and eighty of them don't know they have diabetes. That is, they're just walking around, yeah, until you test them and then you find very scary. Hypertense, they are diabetic. Very scary. So that was something which sort of became the foundation for almost all the work we did after that. The, it was to see how do you exactly how do you increase people's awareness of yeah. things like hypertension? How do you increase screening opportunities? Yeah. How do you keep people? How do you link people to care and yeah. how do they stay there? Yeah. Because 11 people being on treatment yeah. in the last 12 months and mm. only like five, mm. Mm. like it means it's difficult to keep yeah. people in care. Okay. So all our subsequent research sort of revolved around Built that. from that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that, that's nice. Did you ever diversify? No, I, I see how the, it was <laughs> built from there. Did you ever diversify from that in uh, your own personal grants? Um, I, 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 I say I would say yes yeah. because now our portfolio now includes work on genetics, okay. how you connect genes. Um, so if you have a certain genetic predisposition, yeah, and you add smoking, yeah, you add uh, oh. poor diet, mm. how does that affect mm. your risk? Mm. Um, we've moved to like a lot of our work is still on the intervention side. Yeah, we've moved to the digital health, how you can use digital tools to support patient care, oh, nice. uh, patient centered care mostly. Yeah. Um, we've done work on um, policy. Yeah. Diabetes, I mean, non-communicable disease policy. Policy, yeah. Because that's where everything starts. Yeah. yeah. So, like, uh, the portfolio now is very broad. From that route. Yes. Twelve. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Thirteen years. Because ago. if you if you if you can quantify how yeah. big the problem is, yeah. then now you, you can, can justify tell story. why you need yeah. solutions to that yeah. problem. Yeah. So that that's was a, really, a really good nice. beginning point. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <clears throat> that's a good. So the portfolio is now huge, and uh, it runs. Mm. You're no longer its head, though. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Um, I think that's the advantage of working in. Young institutions, yeah, but it's also a disadvantage. But I think the advantage is outweigh the disadvantages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I love to hear the growth of the portfolio. That's that, that that's super amazing. Mm -hmm.